gas prices. Gas prices. Gas prices. Gas prices. Gas prices. Get used to hearing those words. As summer pump prices spike, this perennial election trope is getting a fuel injection. Do you think the President of the United States going into re-election wants gas prices to go up higher? Gas prices have doubled. Is there anybody here who thinks that makes a lot of sense? And while Republican candidates are chanting drill, 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 a president feeling the heat on the issue is floating another idea. Literally. Algae. You got a bunch of algae out here. Right? Yep, algae. Or algae, depending where you're from. A source the president says could replace up to 17% of oil imports for transportation. If we can figure out how to make energy out of that, we'll be doing all right. Right now, the Department of Energy is funding more than 30 algae projects. And while that's a tiny fraction of the total energy spend, it has his political foes fired up. There is no algae that's going to come out of this this summer. His idea of a solution was algae. 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 It's something from a Saturday Night Live skit. Obama's right about one thing, this stuff is everywhere. It's one of the most diverse, abundant and productive species on planet Earth. In some species, almost half of their body weight is oil, called lipids, and that means fuel. But how far away is filling up your tank with fuel made from algae? Let's get the basic science here in the lab of Dr. Jürgen Poli. So we have a few hundred candidate strains. He's hunting through thousands upon thousands of algae strains. They're all in, stored in tubes to take less space. The end goal is finding algae strains that are basically obese, that have as much oil as possible. Without roots, branches, seeds, or leaves. The algae don't really need specific structures, let's say, to hold them upright. Algae's only desire is being an efficient cellular power factory, using photosynthesis to transform carbon dioxide and sunlight into energy. Algae leaves other crops for dead. It takes far less land than soy or corn to create the same amount of oil. And algae isn't a snob. You'll find it hanging out anywhere, in salt or waste water, rivers, lakes, bird baths. And it doesn't compete for farming land. Most promising, CO2 used to grow algae can offset carbon released when the fuel is burned. The end product isn't an additive like ethanol. It's a direct fuel equivalent. In May last year, a US Navy Seahawk helicopter became the first Navy aircraft to fly on a 50-50 blend of algae and regular petroleum. While the science of this isn't new, it's been around for about 50 years. Now, in 2012, private companies, big and small, are vying for a stake in a potential algae rush. I want to welcome you to uh, Garden State Bioenterprises Woodbine Specialty Facility. The industry right now is in a transition from the laboratory to the entrepreneurs. To win over funders, they're starting small. These 500-gallon photobioreactors are lavishing algae with nutrients and only the tastiest parts of the light spectrum. The blue spectrum and the red spectrum, it's much more efficient. But there are limitations. Algae doesn't take much CO2 from the air you or I breathe, so it must be sourced from a solid state. It does not suck it. That sucking sound you hear is not algae being grown from CO2 just out in the air. There are big funding gaps in research and development. And that gap is the growing. That's where the bottleneck is right now. Finding uh, the capitalization necessary to go to scale. There's really no set cookbook. A lot of that cookbook is waiting to be written. There is another area of funding too, which experts say is being overlooked. Right now, we really don't have, we have a very fuzzy picture of what's going on in the government. And I think that needs to get clarified. David Rajeski is an expert in ecological risk policy. What happens, for example, if one of these genetically modified algal strains escapes into the wild? So it's important to understand that you know, algae basically underpins the entire food system of the marine uh, habitat. One actually has to put some money aside to look at the risks, 20 to $30 million minimally spent over the next 10 years. Part of the challenge is, is that technology starts to move ahead of our risk assessments. Policy can't keep up with the breakthroughs. 400 times has never been done. In fact, I think three times was the state of the art before that. Scott Plummer has just picked up a patent for a discovery that allows a different kind of fuel, hydrogen, to be made from algae at a rate 400 times more than in nature. Uh, our potential gold mine, as you call it, is, uh, is that we could, in theory, have a biological way to produce hydrogen. While it's still early days, Scott says it's a discovery that could have huge implications for the fight against man-made climate change. Biologically produced hydrogen, we would emit no CO2 from cars at all. My hopes for all biofuels in general are, 
are that we get at least one of them or two of them because this is the way to the future. This is the way to cut climate change. So where does that leave us? Is Mr Gingrich right that algae won't replace car fuels in the near future? It's not going to uh, uh, be able to do that at all. At least a five to ten year program before we start to see significant impacts. Well, it's not a panacea. I don't think it's ever going to be a panacea. You start peeling back a lot of the, the rhetoric and the jargon. What's underneath this is essentially the scientific foundation for the next industrial revolution. The question is going to be, can we be smart enough to get it at a price point that makes sense for the American people?